Hi Philip, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm particularly excited actually about this interview because I'm a, a sucker for reviews and uh, I'm Aren't we all? addicted to looking at <laughs> yeah, I'm addicted to looking at reviews. It's probably a bit a bit unhealthy. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I for one as a consumer absolutely understand uh, the value I think in in, in a review yeah. because I, I yeah, I have an unhealthy habit in, in looking at them in whatever I do. So uh, I mean let's let's start with talking a little bit about yourself. So so how did you get into this this area? Well, it, it's it's quite odd actually because my background uh, I was in the music industry for a number of years and uh, in PR, okay. uh, which is just totally you know aside from anything to do with this. And I had a friend that we met when we were studying marketing, um, John, who's now my business, my business partner, who had this idea, uh-huh. and it was I'm talking a fair while ago, but it was um, yellow pages, which kind of yeah used to be the big thing before uh, before mm. the ad- advent of everything online and um he said you know, wouldn't it be a great idea if we could give businesses a way of being able to promote themselves but not through an advert through what their customers say and it was a kind mm. of yeah, yeah that's interesting i think the only people that were doing it at the time literally was ebay um and oh, wow, yeah okay. it just it just goes to show you know how kind of original it was at the time so yeah, we, yeah. we, you know, we, we batted things uh, back and forward and, you know, we came up with this idea and it was very different in terms of what we did. Anyway, it's evolved into what we did as, as working feedback. But my, as I say, mm. I was in PR, then I, I went into the legal sector on business um, marketing, uh, business mm-hmm. development. And John's side was kind of tech and sales side. So the two of us, not only were we were good friends, but we kind of complemented each other on the skills that we had and just decided to to go for it and um here we are kind of 17 years later uh as i say it was it was a different beast when we started because we were kind of catching all it wasn't it wasn't focused on healthcare because we're now the specialists in healthcare but it was um it was doing lots of different things working for many different businesses and yeah it's just evolved Uh from there so what actually is working feedback for people who may not know what what do you do and what services do you provide well, we, we started in 2006, so we've been around uh, quite some time now in terms of that, but we, we, we started specialising within dental sector um, from about 2012. And what we do is it's a solution that takes care of every element of feedback, um, which means the whole process from collection, moderation, publishing, uh, online to, to social mm-hmm. media, etc. With the solution, I mean, we can automate the whole process um, for example, we're, we're top tier partners with Software of Excellence and Dentally. And mm. within a few clicks, you can automate this whole process. So when you're updating your, your practice, uh, practice management software, um, you don't need to do anything else. You just complete a treatment and the whole system will kick in in terms of that. Yeah. So when that happens, we then moderate and we publish the reviews. We collect Google reviews. Um, we also create these website uh, widgets for you so that the reviews are dynamically being updated on your website. So again, there's nothing else you need to do. It just happens, which in turn then gets into the Google machine, which means that then you start getting uh, star ratings within your uh, with, within your profile and you stand out for the right reasons yeah, that's going on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think nowadays it's probably harder to come across a practice that maybe isn't convinced by the importance of reviews i think with social media and things like that and uh you, it's, it's quite obvious that they have a, a huge impact in your your customer base we should tell them all that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna say you'd, i don't know why i'm saying you'd be surprised. <laughs> but, <laughs> some, some of the i was on, gonna sorry. say some of the experience some of the experiences i've had um you know when when you say like five five years ago yeah uh, it was all about when, when i was talking to principals or pms particularly principals, mm. they would say, uh, no, you know, I, I, these, these reviews, I don't think, uh, I don't think they're for me. Um, I, you know, I, and I don't want them unless they're all five star. Right. Um, so, it, it, and the landscape has changed considerably because as you've just said, you know, the majority of people understand them. Um, yes. They know what a review, what good a review can do, um, whether it be negative or positive, Mm. And again, hopefully we'll, we'll cover some of that. But yeah, yeah they, they get to understand it now, definitely. 
So uh, you covered a bit about it there, but why are reviews so important for practices? So let's 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 say you know, I mean, they still exist. People are still going to be out there who aren't convinced by the importance of reviews. So, for the sake of those who might be having their doubts, why are they so important? Well, I, I, as you said at the intro, uh, Gabby, w- what's important now is um, we all look at reviews. You know, every kind of well, not even considered purchases. You know, we, we go from um, deliveries all the way through to, you know, uh, buying a car. It's yeah. all about uh, looking at. And when, when you're looking to, to make this considered purchase, and dental practice and dental treatment is certainly comes under that because this is something very specialist. Mm. Uh, it's about your health. It's about your appearance. It's, it's very, very important. And you hear these nightmare stories. So, yeah. so reviews are just that element of that reassurance and that credibility that, when you find somebody, um, whether it be a, you know, local to you or whether you're looking for a specialist treatment, mm. but that person, um, you know, you're, you're getting third party uh, feedback mm. in relation to just adding that credibility. And, you, you know, it, it's it, every it's kind of unusual if you don't have them now to a certain yes. extent, um, because, you know, you, you used to have them. There used to be multitude of, of directories, etc., that had lots of reviews and you just couldn't trust them because they'd be so... Um, they'd be so sporadic in terms of, you know, some would be negative, some would be positive. So you couldn't get a, a genuine kind of a valid opinion. But nowadays, because it's much more focused, mm. it really helps in terms of uh, making sure that you can make that decision and, and feel good about it. Um, and often, you know, it's it's completely the right decision based on, on what you're doing through impartial reviews. Mm-hmm. How, how can practices look to grow these then? I mean, it's quite a daunting prospect, particularly if yeah. you're a practice that perhaps haven't got as huge or as big an online presence as perhaps other ones. So, so how would you actually get this process started? Well, again, firstly, you need to do something, and that sounds like a, a you know a kind of flippant comment, mm. but you'd be surprised at how many. It's kind of stalling, you know. It, it's a we know we we need to do this, but where do we start? Uh, you know, how do we get the reviews? So. Yeah. I mean, the most, and the thing that I think is, it's kind of obvious when you say it, but with a dental practice, you have the most valuable resource for a review walking in out and out of your practice every single day. Yes. Yeah, um, the vast majority of your patients, if only asked, you know, because it's that, that yeah. the front of house will often say, you know, how was it today? And oh, fantastic. Look, you know, they're beaming because they've just had a treatment or they've just had some pain yeah. relief in terms of that. And they're over the moon. But it's the ability to capture that, and that's where they don't. So that's why I say, and as, as I, you've got to start doing something. Yeah. yeah. So that can happen. You know, start small. Just ask patients when they're just about to leave, when you mm. know that, you know, they've had that experience, um, and and ask them. And you can capture that in written form. Um, it's not as valid because obviously, if it's done impartially, yeah, it's, it's stronger. Um, but but yeah, start small so you get into the habit of that. Um, the other part as well, which is is obviously very um, big within within dental practices, is Google reviews. Yes. Um, yeah. But that causes again that has another few difficulties because mm. you can't get Google reviews from everybody, and it's this scenario that we hear from time and time again is that well I've spoken to the patient and yeah they love us and they'd love to leave a review and they said they'd do it when they get home, and of course <laughs> you know it's the yeah. usual thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, EastEnders is on or whatever it may be, <laughs> it's a distraction and yeah. it, it just, just gets forgotten about. And because there's no process, there's no follow up in that, it just gets lost and yeah. um, it's it's quite discouraging as well. So so that's a, a good way of doing, um, just making, think about starting small, but you need to start doing something. Mm. Um, and video testimonials again are another part which is a little bit easier than it used to be but again mm. it's a lot of time and not a not a lot of people like actually you know getting in front of a camera yes yeah, and uh, and giving their opinion so it's, it's quite difficult but yeah start small um but of course you know look at other processes that do it for you mm. um and that's that's the most important thing but but the other element as well is collate some of the information that you've got one of the biggest bugbears that we have is when you look at a dental practice and of course this goes through for a, a, a patient as well is They'll look at their website and they'll go to the inevitable testimonials page or what our customers, what our patients say. And you look at the reviews and they were literally put on when the website was built. That is you know, always so, happens. 
<laughs> so, so you're looking at that and you're thinking, okay, well, I looked at this six months ago and that relates to, I had this wonderful treatment in 2019. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, so, yeah. so it's, it, you've got to make sure that it follows through in terms of not just um, asking, but you've got to, I say, you've got to do something that mm. you have to take uh, control in terms of that because it's not as, you think it's an easy thing to do. You think, oh yeah, of course I can get tested. I'll just ask, uh, I'll ask this patient, I'll ask that patient. Yeah. But of course, work gets in the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and when you when you specialise within dentistry, yeah, you know, your most important thing is other treatments and your patients. Um, so yeah, it's it's not as easy as it sounds. I, I may be um, wrong in this, so correct me if I am. But I can imagine it's a lot harder for somebody to remember to give a good review than it is a negative review. I think a lot of the time when you see reviews, you know, dental practices or or anything, a restaurant, um, an experience at a yeah. park, whatever, a lot of the time people think, right, I need to write that review when they've had a something that stands out, which often is negative, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so with, with dental practices, obviously, you're never going to get it right 100%. Um, you might get it right 99.9% .9 of the time, and it might be an unfair review. Yeah. But regardless, how, how, do you, how do you handle that? Because obviously... There must be de loads of dental practices who, who may feel quite disheartened by getting a yeah. negative review and yeah. feel that it's the end of the world and will ruin their rankings if they do. So what would you yeah. say for that? Well, again, this is uh, this is one of the, these things that is, is, is not rocket science. Mm. It's, it's going to happen. Reality check. You will get a negative review of some description mm. uh, at some stage. Now, the important part is that um, what often tends to happen, you mentioned about, you know, somebody is is, uh, is much more likely to, to leave a negative review and that's because they're motivated to do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, they've had that experience and they think, do you know what? Oh, that's yeah, infuriated me for, test, for whatever you know? reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's, they've got to have, they've got to have that, that uh, ability to do something. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, um, they'll go, they'll look for somewhere to do that. And that, in a lot of cases, is Google is, is Google reviews, and mm -hmm. that's why, um, unfortunately. So, what I would say is, it will happen, and whether that's ex staff, whether it's disgruntled patients yeah. or competitors, it's a fact of life. Mm -hmm. So, the most important thing is have something in place that you are not reactive, you are proactive. Yes. Because one of the things a lot of people might remember, you know, that you know, do you remember the original TripAdvisor thing where? These B and B owners um, were getting all these negative reviews. Uh, this is a few years ago now. Yeah. But, and what they would do is, how dare they say this? And they would go straight online and yeah. respond to that reply, and not particularly politely either, so that they won't be very diplomatic about it. They just do it, and yeah. and of course, it just when you're reading that, you're thinking, oh, hang on a minute, I, I'm not sure I want to stay here. If that's the reaction of, of uh, yeah, I understand you know, that. what they say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so what is important is that you have a process in place and you've got to be proactive as opposed to reactive um, and what we tend to do is you know when, when we're giving advice in terms of negative uh, negative feedback is that do you know what if it's right or mm -hmm. there's you know an element and it's as you said at this, uh, a bit earlier like 99.5 percent of dental practices get it right and they they, they yeah. really do yeah and uh, uh, the other proportion of that is generally kind of constructive feedback as well. It's not necessarily negative. It could be, mm. well, you know, the, the dentist was amazing um, you know, to carry out the treatment. I'm over the moon. However, reception were, you know, do you know when I walked in, they were a bit miserable. They weren't yeah. very welcoming. Yeah, yeah. So they could give a five star rating for that, but it could be, do you know what? That's constructive feedback mm. is, okay, well, thank you for that. The ability to reply to it um, yeah. and not literally knee jerk. It's about saying, you know, thank you so much. Um, thanks for the comments about this. Um, but what was really helpful was you gave us that feedback in relation to, to reception. Mm. Of course, this was not normally like this. And what we've done as a result, we've made sure that, you know, we've done X, Y, and Z yeah. um, to make sure it doesn't happen. Because then that, you've got to think about negative feedback um, balanced with positive because the vast majority will be positive. Mm. And people are savvy now, you know. It, the days where you would just expect, as I referred to earlier about that principle that says, all I want is five star reviews. Yeah. People are savvy. If you see that, you're a little bit suspicious, aren't you? you think, oh, 100%. You know what? That's, that's a little bit perfect for me. <laughs> um, so, so when you've got that ability to, and I'm not saying you know, encourage negative feedback. What I, what I would say is you've got to encourage, you've got to expect that there will be 
some um, constructive and potentially negative feedback. Yeah. You have to accept that, but it's what you do with it, the most important thing, because me as a potential patient looking at these reviews that mm. have been collected and replied to, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to look at this list. I'm going to say, okay, I can, I can see that one, but I see they replied and you know they've, they've explained what happened or what they're going to do as a result of it. Um, but look at the rest of these. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's actually something, somebody, a, a place that I want to go to. So it, it, it's important. Don't be reactive. Um, accept obviously if it, if it may be wrong but there will be occasions when it's not when it, when it isn't right when, yeah i was just about example, to ask about know, that yeah yeah well, yeah so some sorry sometimes you, you go on and you can see somebody i'm going to use an example that's unrelated to dentistry because i think that's a bit yeah. easier so for example someone's re um left a review for a um hotel and they said oh you know awful service um i asked to check yeah. in early they said that they would yeah. and they didn't let me in if that was totally inaccurate how do you then handle that yeah okay well th there's two areas to that firstly our service we we every review that comes in we moderate okay and uh what i mean by that is that you know we won't uh, hide it or anything we we will read it before it's made live because again just to use that um that comparison between a delivery service and a dental practice yeah uh if a pack <laughs> If your package is late or it's left at the doorstep, do you know what? It, it kind of happens. Yeah. However, if you've got a negative review on a dental practice in relation to, you know, somebody claiming that the, the you know the treatment hasn't gone as, as it should have been and it was amateur, whatever, that has a hugely detrimental yeah, impact sure. because you know for CQC for the practice itself, for potentially looking at that. So that's why it's important. Um, from our perspective, we moderate and we make sure that there is there's a level of you know fairness in this yeah. because um it, we have a what we call a further investigation process which means that do you know what um what's not going to happen is that it's just going to go completely unchecked it's going to go live and let them fight it out it's not about that <laughs> okay. um, for our dental practices yeah we have that further investigation where it will go into a stage where they have the opportunity to um to give their side yeah. um yeah. and it, 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 it essentially it won't now in the cases of and, and if it is plainly wrong and there's there's genuine evidence for that because we collate that and we have to have mm. an audit trail in relation to people like CQC. Yeah. Um, if it's plainly wrong, so it would be you know restricted if that's the if that's what happens. Now, in the case of Google reviews, which are slightly different, and because we are a Google partner, so so we do collect Google reviews. So what we can't do is we can't stop a Google review going live onto Google. Right. Um, that's because it's Google. Um, yeah, of course. We, we just it would be against their their regulations. Mm. And the advice I give to all of the practices, and it's quite a lot that we speak to about um, what happens if I get this review on Google, is again what I've, I've previously said is, do you know what? Don't let it sit there. Think about it and make sure that you respond to a reply, even if, which happens in a lot of cases of that, is that I'm so you know. Thanks for the review, and I'm so sorry to hear this, but we can't quite identify you as a patient. Yeah. Um, you know, or something like that, because you yeah. have to address it. You have to say, well, we want to deal with this. Um, you know, it's important that we can, but we've got no record of you, or, you know, that uh, we would like to speak to you separately about this. Okay. Address it. That's, yeah. that's the most important thing. Yeah. No, that makes complete sense. And often when I am looking at reviews, like I said, I love a review, uh, you can see that kind of response, and you. I'm not going to go around to say that reviews are con continuously not true, yeah. but sometimes you can get some some quite bitter people out there, can't you? You know, that's just a part of life, and 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 they aren't they aren't legit, you know? They're, they're not. Yeah. It's a name you don't recognise, or perhaps yeah. they're doing that to protect their identity. I don't know, but it, it is something that I can imagine dental practices come in come into contact with. So I was just wondering how you would recommend navigating that when it does happen. Yeah, and again, Gabby, that, that's 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 quite an important thing because just to track back a little bit is that mm. the 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 relevance of having a process in place means that you know what's going on. What tends to happen is that if and you've probably seen this for other businesses, if you start seeing a negative review about a particular business, it's more than likely it's like a it's it's like a crescendo. You know, mm. they will start coming in because that's the platform for people to do that. Mm. Um, and that's because they don't have a process. They're, they're just leaving those reviews on there. They're not dealing with them. They're not being proactive. And they just will snowball in yes. terms of that. So yeah. by having that process in place, you know that 
you know, you have to you have to do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. You can't just literally bury it. And, and I'm, dental practice, I'm not saying they would do that, but it's an easy thing to do if you don't have that process in place. Definitely. And, you know, dent, dent, like you said earlier, dental practices are busy places, especially at the moment. So it's, yeah. it's understandable yeah. why these things... You, a staff member might come in and say, oh gosh, have you seen, we've got this negative review on Google, and you say, oh no, I've got to look at that after work, and then a patient yeah. comes in late, and you end up staying back an hour, and then it goes out of your head, it's yeah. so easy It's so easy to, to to miss and not address properly, so what you guys do, I can it imagine, is, it, make sure it stays on the radar, and that you're you're actively yeah. responding to that, Absolutely. to make sure it doesn't happen again. And, and, and as you say, it's one of the most visible things, yeah. um, you know, you could almost personify a negative review it's kind of magnified yeah. <laughs> 10 times more than a positive one to a For certain sure. extent uh, Unfortunately. and of course a lot of people take it personally um which you know so it can be it's an emotional thing um, yes when, when somebody says something about about what well, you but your business um, yeah yeah of absolutely. course we're, we're all human yeah yeah yeah, and from both perspectives, you're just you're sort of quite protective of your own interests, aren't you? Understandably so. So if you if you're yeah. very proud of your practice and what you deliver, and maybe just one time there was a little bit of a uh, some difficulties facing the practice, and somebody sort of goes in a bit too hard on you on Google, you are yeah. gonna probably feel quite per take it quite personally. So um, yeah, yeah, this I, is that B and B thing again. If you've had a bad day, whoa. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Just take a step back from it for a moment, and have a think about how to respond. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, how how can reviews be be used to, to upsell? Um, what 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 can you do? What do you do that helps helps with that? Yeah. Well, again, this is when you start talking about this. The initial thing is online. Mm. Um, so, so that's the first thing. Uh, once you start building something, you have a process in place, um, and you have yeah a, a, a solution of being able to use these reviews. It makes you stand out on Google. And that's one of the most things, but that's not the be all and end all of it okay. because that's a visible thing. Um, the, the way of being able to grow is, is um, you know, once you start getting these positive reviews, you'd be amazed. You said about, you know, uh, uh, dental practice being busy, particularly yeah. coming out of COVID. Um, recruitment is very tough within yeah. dental practices, you know, for all levels of, of, uh, of the team within, mm. within dental practices. So, uh, you know, as far as growing is concerned, it, it's... Um, it's sharing with your team because when you have um, a, a system, a process in place for capturing feedback, again, going back to this thing, you know, front of house teams would be, sometimes it can be a bad day in terms of why am I 10 minutes late? You know, I wasn't told about this. Um, it, it can be, yeah. and all you hear are kind of negative things. Yeah. And being able to share with your team is a hugely important element yes. of, of uh, reviews. You know, the highs and the lows, but especially the highs, because mm. there's nothing, and we hear it a lot, there's nothing better than the front of house team who, who are, you know, doing a specific role, um, and they don't hear a lot of the positive stuff. So being able to share that um, is, is really important. But again, once you start and you have something in place, whether it's on your website, so you've got reviews going into your website as well, yeah. is that um, you've got to think about recruitment. You know, we all do that search. If we're looking... Uh, whether it be a new role or, or in whatever scenario, we we'll mm. get back to the start again, we look at reviews. You know, would I want to work at this place? Uh, yeah. Let's have a little look. Oh, wow. I didn't, you know, I didn't even realise. Uh, I've got 300 reviews. Um, yeah. And, you know, it says what a lovely place it is. The team are welcoming, etc. So it's great in terms of that. Yeah. But the other part about um, how, to, how to grow is, you know, using those reviews um, through your website, um, on Google, um, and I don't just mean Google reviews because uh, it, it's it's a part of that. Yeah. It's the other element of, of Google where you're found with star ratings, etc. Mm -hmm. That's another part to, to get there. But also social media. Um, social media is, uh, particularly Instagram for dental practices, yeah, is a massive part in terms of that. So again, it's all these messages, and it's not just about you know the cosmetic side of it. It's just You've, you've got to take sometimes the treatments away and it's more about the people um, as well. So there's a nice mix there in terms of that. But of course, in terms of growth, content is key. So if you're, let's say you, you've got a number of reviews that are talking about just how brilliant the teeth whitening was in yeah. this particular practice, do you know what? You're, it's likely you're going to get more inquiries from sure. potential patients saying, I'm looking for teeth whitening, you're the people I want to use. Um, now, the upsell element as well is, is a feature that we provide, which means that 
if I'm a patient and I'm over the moon, I've just had, you know, let's say it's teeth whitening, for example, and I'm, I'm leaving my review uh, and I'm, uh, I'm saying uh, how wonderful this was, etc. Um, but I've also been thinking about you know, potentially Invisalign or something. Yeah. Didn't even know the practice did it because what we don't like doing is being sold to. So within the feedback process as well, you can add those additional treatments you provide. Okay. So you think, oh, well, okay, well, it's, it, I'm not being hard sold here. I didn't even know they did it. Yeah, let's tick that. And it, it not only educates me about letting me know about the other treatments, mm. um, services that provided, but also um, it's a great you know, upsell for the dental practice because Absolutely. I might've gone somewhere else otherwise. So yeah, it's combining all of that stuff. And again, uh, yeah, you're going to get sick of hearing this, but it's about having something, a process in place because yeah. otherwise things don't gel together. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, and, and come from, like I said at the beginning, coming from somebody who, who Googles a, a restaurant or a, a service before using it, I, I absolutely understand the value in, in having a good review system in place and processes behind that because it's obvious when, I think anyway, for, as a, from a consumer's point of view, it's obvious when there is yeah. a lot of care and attention being given to that area. You can see that kind yeah. of proactive, constructive replies to perhaps negative reviews or ones that are not 100% happy and in a in a not a confrontational kind of way but sort of more sympathetic you know please get in touch further if this is something you'd like to discuss yeah. so it, it is obvious when that's in place so um yeah thank you so much for for talking me through what you guys are about and, and what you can offer for the dental industry you're welcome you're very welcome